period. Yeah, I know the story. Mr. Charbonneau. He says he doesn't want a lawyer. No, I said I don't need a lawyer. Let's just get that on the record. It's December 11th, 1997. 8.15 p.m. Present, Commissioner Buchanan, Detective Benitez, and Claude Charbonneau for questioning and the kidnapping of Frank and Leslie Holden. Wow. Being worked over by the commissioner himself, what an honor. I take a personal interest in this case. Now I understand that you've declined to have your lawyer present. That's right. I can't afford to pay him every time you guys hassle me over nothing. I don't consider the kidnapping and uh, presumed death of two innocent children to be nothing. Well, it is to me. I mean, I don't know anything about it. Well, I'm going to prove that you did, Claude. Now, the question here is, do you swing alone on this, or are you going to point your finger at the guy who put you up to it? Come on, be smart. Give us R.G. again. There are less than a dozen people out there. But look on the bright side. Hmm. And what side would that be? I went to see Jakar last night. Do you want to hear what she had to say about Todd's smear of you in the sun? Well, I don't know. Do I? She was furious. Yeah. She couldn't believe that you could be involved in the kidnapping of two little kids. And Daddy thinks so, too. So do a whole lot of people who might have believed Todd's lies a year ago. Just goes to show how things can change, right? Okay. It's better than okay, and you know it. What I know is we are dying out there. Hang tough, Uncle RJ. Jakara is seriously considering bringing Blue Jay back to us. I can feel it. All we have to do is keep things on track. We worked hard. Proved an awful lot of people wrong. And in the end, you are going to get exactly what you deserve. As I said, Blair is leaving. She is? Yes. When she arrived unexpectedly, I made it very clear to her that I had a date with you. At what point does she wrap herself around you like a vine? Look, Ian, I can't deal with this. You don't? have to deal with anything. Blair is leaving. It's not as though I'm going to have to throw her off my yacht. You do have a flair for the dramatic, but no, of course I'll leave since you ask me so nicely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, Ian, the more time you spend with her, the more you realize what I said about you and me and her is true. And... When you decide that you know that you're wasting too much time and want to get real, well, you can come find me, okay? And if you're lucky, I'll still be around. Can we pretend that she was never here? As soon as Blair clears the dock area, I won't be here either. Good. That gives me a few minutes to try and change your mind. And I will because I am determined to make good on my promise. Which promise, Ian? That's the promise where you get to spend a few hours not worrying about your mother. Uh. And we get to enjoy some champagne. And some very fine jazz that I've selected. And each other's company. Ian. Uh, uh, nope, nope. I will not take no for an answer. And you know how determined I can be. For I am even a mash for your Aunt Dorian, who thankfully will not be a part of this evening's proceedings. Cheers.
Friday. Champagne, no to the music, or the whole, me. <laughs> the whole package. Okay, the first two items are negotiable, but I'm not. Look, I, I, I don't want to be a part of whatever game you're playing with Blair. The game is over. Does she know that? That's my fault. I kept saying no and no, but I kept enjoying the hell out of the attention. Oh. But I'll take care of it. Let's, let's drink to freedom. Oh, come on, that's un-American not to drink to freedom. Ian, you're British. Actually, both my parents are American. And ever since that, uh, little revelation and Sir Guy's death, I have been on a path of, what shall I call it, self-discovery, you know? Who am I? What am I? Where do I belong? Those questions. Yes. You are on the same journey. So to freedom. Freedom from lies and hypocrisy and fear. Freedom to trust, to respect oneself, and to love. I'll drink to that. Good. I think that you will save me yet. Save you from what? Well, I still feel that I'm standing on the threshold. You know, getting my bearings, getting my balance. Guy always kept me off balance, and now I have to find my own center. Sometimes I felt as if I don't have a center, as if I'm hollow. You see, that's it. That's the first step, recognizing the emptiness, and then you have to fill it. And I would like to help you with that in any way I can. Why? Because you are so unbelievably wonderful. You, you, you have a generous heart because you have a lively mind, because you have a pilgrim soul. And I believe that helping you to find your balance will help me to find mine. Am I going too fast here? I think so. Okay, okay, we can take all the time that we want because if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Right? And I mean a lot more than, you know, just some champagne and brie aboard my aunt, but... I think you know that. And by the way, so does Blair and your friend Joey. Because I have made it very clear that I will let neither of them get in our way. BC. She's speechless. I don't know if this is good or bad, but she is speechless. When you describe that empty place inside of your soul, you know, how you feel off balance. You recognize it? Yeah, I do. I try to explain it to Joey, but he just cannot accept that I have changed, you know? Well, in his defense, I mean, he wasn't here to see the butterfly come out of its chrysalis, but here you are, stretching your wings with all your dazzling colors, almost ready to fly. Well, Joey still thinks like I'm this caterpillar. <laughs> this fuzzy little cute caterpillar that he just wants to carry around with him. Well, that's good for a pet, but um, butterflies need to be free. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't think I wanted to be free before. I wanted to be part of something or someone. We all do, but as an equal. As I find out about myself and where I come from, the freer I feel. Sky's the limit. Yeah. I like that idea. I believe that. Exactly. And that's why we can't let people keep us on the ground, the, the, the Joeys and the Blairs of this world, because we need to evolve. I like the way you're talking. Well, that proves that it must be right. I mean, you don't have to answer to Joey or anyone else. Take to the skies with me. We can have a hell of a lot of fun up there. I remember fun. Now, this evolving, it won't be fun and games all the time. So we have to make the most of it when we can, okay? Okay. Especially since as I have a an inordinate amount of money which is accumulating at a great rate. <laughs> you have to help me spend it. Oh, I think you're doing okay. Oh, no, no, not at all. I haven't even made a dent. But I do have a theory on what to do with the money. And there's only one way to test it. Are you game? Now, I am intrigued. <laughs> If you think you're intimidating me, you're not. I gather there's been a kidnapping. You want to question me. If and when I hear a question, I may answer it. Tell me all about you and R.J. Gannon. R.J., in, in the old days, before I was rehabilitated by the state, I used to send him some business. What kind of business? Well, people who needed money, people who didn't like banks. When was the last time you had any contact with him? Well, uh, four or five weeks ago. In person? On the phone. He called you? I called him. Why? More else, I needed a loan. For what? As a commissioner, no doubt knows I am on parole. Yeah, you served uh, six years for extortion. <clears throat> Not many people want to hire an ex-con. I'm reduced to being a used car salesman. Yeah, Uncle Moe's auto employee. I hate used cars. I want... I want to open a coffee bar. <laughs> I like coffee. So, I go to R.J., you know, for some seed money. A loan for old time's sake. He brushes me off. He's uh, out of the business into music now. A club indigo. Mm -hmm. You been there? So that was it. One call. Oh. I'm a very persistent man, Commissioner. How many calls? Hmm, three, four, maybe. Oh, and a couple of the payphone in case you're checking. Now, also, uh, he called me once. No, twice. Twice. That sounds very cozy. Well, not exactly. I couldn't wear him down. He told me, uh, no means no, buzz off. So much for loyalty for an old pal. You consider R.J. Gannon an old pal? Not anymore. Hey, does that mean I can go? Don't leave town. No. Nah. Oh, if you can't find me, try calling my uh, parole officer. Well, that explains the calls, if you believe them. Yeah, he and R.J., uh, they have the bases covered, don't they? But those phone calls coincide just a little too neatly with the kidnapping. You want to take a look at uh, Claude's phone records? I can go get another search warrant. So you're a good man. Benny, let's do that. Let's see who Claude has been talking to. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can rattle R.J. Gannon's cage a little. So, you think I should be counting my blessings? Okay. Well, maybe Jakara is ready to take another look at us. And that's great. <laughs> I'd say so. And for your sake, I'm glad that Henry isn't all bent out of shape over this. Because he really respects you. And he trusts you. And he should. Look, in my experience, there's always another shoe out there just waiting to drop. You paying bills? Max didn't want a memorial for the twins. 
But he suggested a contribution in their names to Maggie's School for the Deaf in New Orleans. Do me a favor. Deposit this in your account and then forward it on to Maggie under your name, okay? Yeah. $10,000? Well, that way you won't have to declare it on your taxes. That's the uh, legal limit for a gift, and legal is us. Okay. Why aren't you taking credit for this? Well, that's not really the point, is it? I mean, by now, Maggie knows I'm under suspicion, so she'd just get on her high horse and send the money back or something. Someday, the whole world is going to see you the way I see you. I mean, it's crazy to think that you could hurt two little kids. Well, everyone wouldn't agree. Right, Nora? Shh, Dorian, I just breathe deep. Deep breath. Oh, breathe in. Breathe out. That's good. That's good. It's all right. It's all right. I gotta get out of here. What? Dorian, see if the electricity is off and the, the generator is down. Let me see if I can find some light, okay? It's on and... You know, you always said that you were claustrophobic, but I really knew, didn't know how serious this was. Look, I found the lamp. Light is on. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Oh. This is much better. Yes. Okay. See, I was in the bathroom when the lights went out, and you know, I got a little anxious, and so I tried to open the door, but it was jammed. You know, I really started to panic, and, you know, of course, I was upset to begin with, and that was just the last straw. Well, what have say you? I... <sighs> what? It just goes on and on. I'm sorry, could I ask you for a little water, please? Just sure. Um, it goes on and on. When will it end? Here you go. Kelly accused me of being the one who purposely tampered with Melinda's medication. And she implied that Mel thought so, too. Oh. Oh, well, to, to hell with them. Come here and sit, sit down, Dory. What, what are you doing here, anyway? I'm supposed to be meeting Mel. Well, you're not, because I'm going to take you home right now. Drink some water, and I'm taking no. you home. No, no, I want to see Mel. You're not going to see... Blair! I want to see Mel. Okay, I have to find out whether or not he is against me, too. I have to see Mel. Where is he? God, I will find out. What's his cell phone number? What, do you remember it? 555-0732. Five, 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 three, two. Three, two. All right, we'll find out. I'm going to see what he has to say anyway. Mel, it's Blair. Blair, where are you? Oh, there you are. What's wrong? What happened? You? Or what has happened? What do you have, this God complex, huh? Well, if you want to mess with somebody, mess with somebody besides Dory, and she can't take much more. Back off a little bit, all right? <laughs> Mel, oh gosh, I um, I had a little panic attack, you know. I was in the um, bathroom when the uh, you know generator went down, and um, you know the door jammed, and I couldn't get out. She has claustrophobia, Mel. No, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I should have had that door to the head fixed a long time ago, and the generator's old. I'll have it replaced. Oh, but you know what? Don't blame the generator and the door. You and Kelly are responsible for this, and you know it. Blair, could you get me some more water, please? Sure, Dorian. Thanks. <laughs> My hands are numb. I'm sorry, honey. Blair's right. You were upset when you came to the banner. 
When I put you off, I just didn't want to have that discussion in the corridor of Vicky's office. Yeah, it, Dorian. Then I had to leave you all alone to brood by yourself. Thank you, Blair. Nell? Kelly made horrible, cruel accusation. Now, I know that she's been very upset. And she's disappointed about the way that her mother's visit went. And, and it would be very hard for her to acknowledge that her mother would be so self-destructive. For her to make up this, this, this cruel scenario in which I would have intentionally withheld Melinda's medication from her is unimaginable. And can't we do something to get the lights back of on? Of course, of course. The, the, the handyman at the bait shop knows how to restart the generator. Go, don't leave. Uh, uh, no. Don't leave. Please? Well, I'll go then. But don't you upset her. You can take off your shin guards, RJ. I didn't bring my hockey stick. You're early. I came to take my daughter to dinner. No hidden agenda, so you can relax. Mm. Or can you? I'll keep my shin guards handy, if you don't mind. Seems people have been coming at me from all sides these days. So what else is new? Well, Mom, where are we going to go for dinner? Have you tried that new Cuban place? Ooh, cha-cha-cha. But we'll smell the garlic on my breath. He's not going to have a chance to get near a restaurant in the near future. Oh, well, I hope that means he's working overtime on the Holden case. It's pretty intense. Uh, well, the sooner he catches those guys responsible, the better. RJ's a little steamed about Todd's article of him in the sun. Ah, uh, well, that's Todd. Exactly. Everybody knows that whatever Todd prints in that paper has no basis in fact. Now, will you believe me? The article generated a whole lot of sympathy for you. Mm, well, gee, I hope Blair read it. She was looking to gouge my eyes out when I went to see Jakara at Rhodey's, and... Thank you for keeping the peace. A brawl was in no one's best interest. And so far, I find myself on your side. <laughs> well, there's a headline for the sun. Um. Oh, well, well, this is a regular family get-together. No, I'm here on official business. Mm. Well, I guess I'm not under arrest, since you didn't bring Benny for backup. Got a few questions for you, RJ. This a bad time? Yeah. Well, let's do it. Rachel, I have to ask you to step outside, please. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Rachel. Come on, sweetie, buy me a drink. Well, could you wait? I would like to have an attorney present for this one. Care to do the honors? How is money like food? Oh, is this a riddle? No, 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 I'm serious. I mean, you need enough to survive, but anything over and above that is, is for pleasure. Now, some people get addicted. They, they, they go overboard, like Guy, for example. He was a, a glutton. You're not a glutton. Exactly. I mean, I'm satisfied with some fruit and some cheese, and yet I haven't inherited a, a, a banquet, metaphorically speaking. So, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to give it all to charity? I mean, I'm already, you know, helping Maggie with her school down in New Orleans, and I have a, a, a flock of accountants who are coming up with worthy causes. Well, hey, listen, I think that is very admirable. Well, I, I blush modestly, but I still can't spend it fast enough. So, what am I going to do? Spend it on flashy doodahs? You know what? I'm not really interested in things. This is coming from a man who just bought a yacht on impulse. <sighs> that falls under the category of uh, home sweet home. Oh, I see. No, no, I mean, well, okay, it, it's a home, but I wanted it to be a fun home. Oh. You know, the kind of home where I could uh, loll around and, and eat grapes and spend time with someone who would get as big a kick out of the experience as I would. So you want to spend your money on incredibly fun experiences? Yes, exactly. That's absolutely it. I mean, I want the desserts in life. I mean, meat and potatoes, they're, they're fine, but give me chocolate. Give me marzipan. Give me something that's sweet and... Sinfully rich. Yes! Yes, that <laughs> is me. So would you like to join me at my uh, dessert banquet? I mean, here it is, laid out before you, and you can have anything that you want, as long as it's not mundane or practical. Anything at all? Anything at all. Dream big. You can have anything. Come on. 
Oh, she has something. She has something. What is it? Even if it's impossible. Even if it's impossible, because if you have enough money, you can get anything you want. Kelly Kramer, what is your heart's desire? Story doesn't make any sense. <laughs> hey, I mean, it was my idea, wasn't it? To, to invite Melinda to Landview. And, and Kelly just kept hurling these horrible accusations at me, and she said... But you believe them, too. Mel, you don't believe that I would do something so horrible, do you? If Melinda wanted to go off her medication, it's highly unlikely that she would have gone to all of the trouble of opening the capsules and replacing their contents with table sugar. How do you know that's what happened? I tasted it. So did Mayor. Your mother's involved in it? I wanted Mayor to identify Melinda's pills. Mayor was surprised they weren't having much effect. So she opened one of the capsules to check its contents. When did this happen? Shortly after Melinda threw her pills across the room on Thanksgiving. Aside from Melinda, only three people in that household had access to that medication. Blair, and Kelly, and you. Are you forgetting about the slew of maids I've had recently and fired? Huh. Why any one of them could have decided to take revenge, to cause trouble in the family. The medication was kept in the kitchen. Only one person was threatened by Melinda's insistence on exhuming the past. My money's on you, sweetheart. country with dramatic vistas. Lovely people, many of them with the shoulders of poor. No, no. Big sea mammal. Whales. Oh, whales? Really? Yeah. Many years ago, I saw this show on TV, on this nature show, about whales, and I couldn't get them out of my mind. So I went out and bought a tape of whale songs, and I listen to it sometimes. I mean, they make me cry. Well, that's not good. No, not out of sadness. It's like they're speaking to me, you know, and I don't feel so alone. I have always wanted to go underwater with the whales and just hear them clicking to one another and singing to one another, just singing to me. I know, I know it's totally weird. No, 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 not at all. I mean, I had the same experience with the whale song. I, I just haven't thought about it in years. And I certainly never told anyone. Let's do this. How? I don't know. But if we have enough money, we can do anything. All right, but we have to get specific here. Now, are we talking about uh, beluga whales in the Arctic? Or uh, uh, a pod of orcas hunting sea lions? Or, or, or sperm whales diving 10,000 feet for giant squid? Maybe that's not such a good idea. <laughs> like, are we serious? Absolutely. Absolutely. Leave it to me. Get your regular lawyer. Well, Nora knows the situation, and she's here. It's not a good idea. Fine, I'll do it without a lawyer. Well, that's not a good idea either. You should never be.
be questioned by the police without counsel present. Rachel, will you wait for me outside, please? You're the best, Mom. This is not a precedent. Go ahead, Commissioner. Claude Charbonneau. So what about him? You know him? Yeah. He did time for extortion. I'm shocked and appalled. Seen him since he's been out? <laughs> he called a few weeks ago, a couple of times. About what? Extortion. Hmm. I'd take this seriously, RJ. What did he want? <sighs> it's like I just told you. Money. He tried to squeeze me for a loan. But hey, convicted felon. Bad credit risk. Besides, I'm in the music biz. So I turned him down. And that took a couple of calls? He answered your questions, Bo. Well, you think Claude went after Holden for the money? I didn't say that. You just did. You were holding up signs to that effect. I mean, that don't make that sound incriminating. Do you have any more questions? No. Not at the moment. Well, good. Wrap this case up quickly as possible, okay? Mm, just for you, R.J. Well, if you don't have any more questions, I'd like to speak to R.J. alone. Could you just tell Rachel that I'll be right out? <laughs> just like old times. Nothing like old times. You hear me? Mel, please, the two of you, stop worrying about me, all right? I, I'm, I'm fine. All I need is a, a good uh, hot bath and a good night's rest. And I don't need you to put me to bed. Uh -huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night, Dorian. Good night, Blair. We're not gonna go up there and continue to torment her. She has had enough. We'll go over this after I make sure Dorian's all right. With Peter Jennings. Nobody should be questioned by the police without counsel. Next time, get your own. Mm. Well, that's okay. I don't expect to need further legal representation in this matter. Bo's going to go on digging. Uh, well, you can't dig up what's not there. I had nothing to do with kidnapping those kids. And that's the truth. So don't sweat it. I hope so. For your sake, Rachel's sake, and Hank's. And mine. I believe you have any real evidence on R.J. because he did not do it. And if you waste your time questioning him, the people responsible may just run away. This is not personal, Rachel. I'm doing my job. But I guess we are all doing our jobs. I'm not taking the case. No, not because R.J. is guilty or I think he's guilty. It's because I'm too involved. And so are you if you'd admit it. He won't. I'm following evidence, and the evidence led me right straight here. Well, I suggest you get more incriminating evidence. Oh, I intend to. Because if I don't nail the person responsible for this crime, those kids are going to haunt me for the rest of my life. I know. Let's go eat some Piccadilly, okay? See you all. Right. doing back I thought you moved out I need to get some clothes do you mind yeah in fact I do because if Dorian sees you it might make things worse Kelly 
But then, you know, hey, what do you care? She's only supported you, loved you, treated you like a daughter. But then now, oh, yeah, I forgot. Now, now, now you have Ian. You can just bat your eyes and suck him into your lost wife routine. Or maybe, maybe, uh, play on Mel's pathetic need to father somebody so when he pokes and prods, you just go along with him, huh? Until you completely destroy Dorian. Is that what you want? No one is looking to destroy Dorian, Blair. Kelly, I found her on the bathroom floor at Mel's boat. She was, she was in a panic attack, completely hysterical. Her claustrophobia? Yeah. So what did you say to her, huh? About Melinda's medication? If I thought you could understand it, then maybe I would explain it to you, but you were too self-absorbed. Oh, my. Like you aren't. Ah. No, you are just trying to get back at me because you were striking out with Ian. Oh, you pit You know what? You have set the all-time record oh, for self-indulgence tonight, young lady. You are careful. Hey, hey, quiet down, you two. She's almost asleep <sighs> with all the lights on. After all, I was staying here tonight, but I had to make a few calls. Let's go into the living room. Come on. Your fault. So she invited the enemy into her bed. Is that oh, it? Oh, for God, oh, shut no, up, No, 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 it's okay, Kelly. Blair isn't expected to understand anything until she knows the whole picture. I'm going to give Cassie a call and ask her to meet us at the houseboat in the morning. We'll lay the whole thing out for you, Blair. Mel, no. Blair's a part of this. She'll see the urgency. She will go run back and tell Dorian everything. You are damn right I will, because I know where my loyalties lie. <laughs> well, we'll just have to take that chance. You know what, Blair? Your love for Dorian and your loyalty to her is exactly what we'll need to get her through this. Well, I tell you what. It better be damn good. Because if it isn't, I will tell Dorian exactly what the two of you are up to. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.